Hey, what's up folks? This is Keith and you're watching Barber's Auto Help. Thank you so much for watching. Well, I'm very excited today because I have one of my favorite engines in front of me. This is the Ford Duratec 2.0 HE engine. And this engine has been used for many, many years on a lot of their vehicles, the Focus being one of them. This came out of a 2014 Ford Focus. This thing is almost bulletproof. I absolutely love these engines. I don't do a whole lot of major repairs to them because they're just so daggum durable. But for this series of videos, I was wanting to go ahead and tear this thing down and give you an overview of all the parts that are on the engine. Well, all the parts that are present on this engine anyway and inside the engine and give a brief description of how those parts work and how they actually make the engine run. So let's talk about what you can expect in this particular video here. We're gonna take this bit by bit. This is part one, of course. So what we're gonna do in part one, I'm gonna remove the intake manifold. I'm also gonna remove the valve cover and we're gonna get into the fuel pump drive here and we're gonna talk about the direct injection fuel injection system in this video a little bit there and also talk about some things that we discover along the way in tearing it down. So let's go ahead and get into this. Let's do a brief walk around real quick and give you some brief history of this particular engine right here. This one had been in a wreck. Uh, as you can see, the engine mount got like knocked out. Actually, the whole engine and transmission got knocked out of the vehicle. So this has actually been sitting for quite some time out in the elements. So I'm not gonna be surprised if I tear this thing down and I find a bunch of rust inside, inside the cylinder walls and whatnot. But as you can see, some things are missing. The alternator's halfway off. We got some hoses missing here. But for the most part, it's pretty well intact. Uh, we got our intake manifold on there with the throttle body and our wire harness and a few of the things on the back here are still present like the purge valve. Uh, we are missing the exhaust manifold unfortunately so you won't see me take that off but that's simple enough. But a lot of the things that uh, came with this engine are still present on this engine and you'll, you'll probably glean a lot of information from this video. But if you have any questions, of course, you are more than welcome to ask down in the comments. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by removing the wire harness. And there it is. Go ahead and remove these ignition coils. Yeah, see it's been sitting out in the rain. Oh wow. Of course you have a coil on plug design ignition system. Each spark plug has its own ignition coil and the spark for each of those spark plugs is generated by each of those ignition coils. So the spark is sent through the ignition coil, down through the spark plug, and that's what ignites the air fuel mixture inside the combustion chamber there. Let's work on getting this valve cover out of the way here. Go ahead and remove the dipstick here. Remove this hose. Let's go ahead and pry this up, get it out of the way. Remove our valve cover here. Now, I'm not planning on reusing these parts, guys, so you're not gonna see me be gentle with this stuff. Uh, this is not an example of how to uh, gently remove parts from an engine especially if you're planning on reusing them. That goes for the rest of the video as well. There we go. Look at all that water. So let's talk about the valve cover here. The valve cover serves a few purposes. Uh, one is to cover up your valve train. Uh, whenever the engine's running, both your camshafts are spinning. Of course, there's lubricant everywhere and it's getting slung all over the place. It's just to cover up the valve train basically uh, and keep the oil inside the engine there. Now, also on this valve cover, you have mounting holes for the camshaft position sensors. And those camshaft position sensors, of course, pick up on these trigger wheels back here on the back of the camshafts. And of course, that lets the PCM know what position those camshafts are in in their rotation. Um, also, the valve cover is a part of the positive crankcase ventilation system. Uh, this little inlet tube right here is uh, a fresh air inlet for the PCV system. So fresh air is allowed to be introduced into the engine and circulated through the engine. And of course, that goes right back out through the oil separator, through the PCV valve, and then into the intake manifold. All right, let's get this intake manifold off. Gotta get this oil separator tube off. 
Whoa, look at all that water coming out of there. Yeah, this thing's been sitting for a long time out in the elements. Okay, once we got our intake manifold out of the way, you can see we have a lot of things exposed now. This is your high pressure fuel rail that goes to your direct injection at fuel injectors. And this is your fuel rail pressure sensor right here. This is your thermostat housing. Of course, the thermostat's inside there. And this is your oil separator. And of course, on top of that, mounted to it, that's your PCV valve. That's a, another part of your positive crankcase ventilation system right here. And this oil separator and PCV valve works in conjunction with the uh, air inlet on the valve cover as a part of the, uh, the PCV system. So the fresh air goes in through the valve cover and then you know you got your blow by and stuff that occurs whenever combustion happens and some of that combustion seeps past the piston rings. Uh, that vapor and stuff that gets down into the crankcase is expelled through the oil separator. The oil separator of course keeps the liquid oil in the engine and allows the vapor and stuff to come up through the PCV valve and then into the intake manifold of course to be returned into the cylinders to be burned. And that's how the PCV system works on this thing here. All right, let's go ahead and remove this oil separator and look on the inside and kind of find out more how it works there. And there's the inside of it right there. And of course, those are passages that go down into the crankcase. And this uh, helps to, to ventilate that that vapor and stuff to keep and also to keep the oil inside the crankcase where it belongs. Now these things right here, these are your knock sensors. Uh, these sensors are responsible for detecting knock inside the engine and of course they send uh, an electrical signal to the PCM to let the, the PCM know that there is knock and then of course the PCM adjusts the way that it runs the, the engine in response to that. And these are held on by two bolts and they have 10 millimeter heads on them. Let's go ahead and remove those. And these are both pretty much the same part there. Um, I do believe that these parts are interchangeable if I'm not mistaken. And I do believe that the connectors and everything are similar on these knock sensors here. So just a tidbit of information that may or may not help you there. You can see that's the same. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the thermostat and the thermostat housing. It's held on by three bolts and those bolts have eight millimeter heads on them. And there's your thermostat right there. And of course your thermostat is responsible for regulating the temperature inside the engine or the coolant temperature inside the engine. Whenever the, uh, the coolant gets up to, I think maybe 180 degrees or maybe a little bit before that, uh, the thermostat starts to open and it allows coolant to pass by it, going into the radiator to be cooled, of course. And then if the, the coolant gets too cool, the thermostat will shut again. It tries to keep the temperature around 180 to 200, uh, give or take, roughly. All right, so while we're here and we're talking about the thermostat, we may as well go ahead and talk about the water pump as well. This is your water pump right here, and as you can see, it is belt driven. So when the crankshaft is, is spinning, uh, the belt's rotating or going around all the pulleys and stuff, it's spinning that water pump. And in turn, inside here, it spins that impeller let me see if I can get in there and show you that impeller. So yeah, there it is right there. So that thing's spinning around and it's propelling that coolant in through that thermostat and then of course pushing it out to the radiator and to be cooled. So that's what actually pushes the coolant through the system. Now on the back side of the engine here, on the back of the cylinder head, you have this water outlet right here. Of course, it goes to one of your radiator hoses and of course uh, one of your heater hoses there and then it also goes to your bypass hose back there. Uh, it's held on by four bolts and they have eight millimeter heads on them. Let's go ahead and remove that. And really all this thing is, is just a passageway for coolant to go through. It just directs the coolant out. Now on the back side here, you have your engine coolant temperature sensor and that senses the temperature of the coolant of course just going to go ahead and remove this all out of the way here i'm just going to cut that hose and being as we just spoke about the engine coolant temperature sensor i think it's fitting that we speak about the cylinder head temperature sensor as well that's this sensor right here and it screws right into the cylinder head and it doesn't go into a coolant passage it actually mates up with the metal on the inside there and it measures the temperature of the metal itself 
And now we can talk about the high pressure fuel injection system or direct injection system. Of course, like, a, like mentioned earlier, this is your fuel rail right here. This is your fuel rail pressure sensor right here. And that tells the PCM what kind of pressure is available inside that fuel rail. Then you got your fuel delivery tube right here that goes up to the high pressure fuel pump, which is up underneath this uh, foam insulator right there. And that's your high pressure fuel pump there. And the high pressure fuel pump is being fed pressure from the fuel tank at all times, of course, usually a lower pressure. And then inside here, it's just one big pump and it's also electrically controlled, but that pump has a little piston that goes up and down and it is driven by a cam or a cam lobe on the back of the exhaust cam shaft here. And we're gonna tear that up and get down in there and see how that works there. But uh, this thing really delivers a lot of pressure to the fuel rail and that's one of the things that really helps the uh, direct injection fuel injection system to work so efficiently uh, these things actually squirt fuel directly into the combustion chamber this isn't multi-port fuel injection where the uh, fuel injector spraying fuel into the intake before the intake valve this is going directly into the cylinder pretty cool stuff really uh, really helps with a uh, fuel economy and overall power output super great stuff here but uh, one thing you should know if you're ever dealing with this or working on something like this you definitely want to relieve the fuel pressure before you crack these lines this thing's been sitting for quite some time so there's no pressure available inside these lines here and you want to of course always wear safety glasses and wear gloves i'm not wearing gloves i know that i ran out um, i do recommend that you wear some kind of protective gloves like nitrile gloves you don't want to get gasoline. You don't want to get all this soot and oil stuff on you either. It's bad for you. But uh, let's go ahead and start tearing this up. So I'm going to start by getting rid of the fuel delivery tube here. Let's remove this nut or bolt. Now these fuel line flare nuts are 17 millimeter. And like I said, there's no fuel pressure stored in this line here. So I have nothing to be afraid of taking this off. Uh, you, however, you your system will probably have some pressure left on it. So you need to use your actually there was a little bit of gas in there a little bit of pressure um, you definitely want to follow the procedure in your repair manual for depressurizing your fuel system before you can safely remove that line uh, several hundred psi maybe a couple thousand psi of pressure going through that tube there so it can definitely get you watch out okay let's go ahead and remove the high pressure fuel pump it's held on by two bolts and uh, those bolts have 10 millimeter heads on them Pull that right up and uh, there's the little piston inside there that gets pushed up and down spring loaded of course you got a little seal right here and inside here you have a little tappet and this is what the uh, that actually rolls on that uh, that lobe of that camshaft that I was telling you about down there and it's got a little roller on it and it goes up and down inside that bore pushing up and down on that piston there Let's go ahead and get this high pressure fuel pump housing off the rest of the way here. And this housing is held on by three bolts and there are 10 millimeter heads on those. Pull that housing right off. And this is what actually drives that high pressure fuel pump right here. Of course, when the engine is running, this is spinning along with the exhaust camshaft. These lobes, as the camshaft is spinning, pushes up and down on that tappet. And of course, the tappet in turn pushes up and down on that piston inside the high pressure fuel pump, like we mentioned earlier. So this is what actually allows the pump to pump. All right, now let's go ahead and get into this high pressure fuel rail here and take it off. Um, we're going to get this stuff out of the way here first. Okay, the high pressure fuel rail is held on by four bolts, as you can see here. We're going to go ahead and remove those. And once you got the bolts out, of course, you can just pry the fuel rail right out. I'm going to be rather rough with this. Don't follow my example here. And as per usual, the fuel injectors are still stuck in the head. Let's go ahead and work some of these out here. Kind of twist and pull at the same time. There we go. And that there is one high pressure direct injection fuel injector. And that connector likes it. I think I'm going to leave that one alone. Let's move on to the next one. Maybe I can unplug this one. Yeah, 
there we go and there's an o-ring of course that goes up top here that's still stuck in the fuel rail of course so you got a rubber seal up here on the top and then you have a teflon seal down here where it actually goes into the cylinder head right there and that's what seals the combustion gases from coming through that fuel injector hole right there it's kind of a tight fit but uh, it does a pretty good job of keeping the combustion gases in there and not allowing it to leak out there but right inside there if you were to go through there you're right inside the combustion chamber and once we get this cylinder head off i'm going to leave a couple of these in i'm going to show you how uh, how they're actually oriented in there and uh, what they look like inside the head from the bottom side now this is a better example of uh, what it's supposed to look like as far as how the o-rings set on the direct injection fuel injector you got this little retainer right here then you got the uh, seal that goes into the fuel rail and then you got another retainer right there and then of course you got your spring that goes on top of the fuel injector you got this little washer here which is going to be a part of the fuel injector that doesn't really come off and then you got your teflon seal right there and then of course you have your spray nozzle the tip of the uh, fuel injector right there well i think that's where we're going to stop for this video here like i said this is part one uh, i think i'm probably going to have two or three parts to this series most likely three being as we haven't even taken the cylinder head off yet uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about the direct injection uh, fuel injection system in the next video of course when i get that cylinder head off uh, i'm also going to talk about the valve train a little bit there and also the timing setup on this engine so i'll post a link to that video at the very end of this video here you can click on that and watch that if you want um, also guys i have a whole series on the i believe it's 2012 to 2018 uh, ford focus equipped with the 2.0 and the uh dual clutch transmission the dps6 um, so i'll post a link down in the description to that series as well you're more than welcome to watch those videos guys um, and as you're probably already aware of i'm very familiar with this this engine here uh, very very familiar with the uh, the 2012 to 2018 ford focus with the dps6 transmission so if you guys have questions please comment down below i'll be happy to get to you if i can i'll do my best um, also guys uh, as always please read the entire description of this video before you uh, apply any of this knowledge here. Uh, this is a very superficial video here, uh, more so meant for like informational purposes and uh, also entertainment purposes. This is not necessarily a how-to video on how to properly tear down a, an engine. We're just going through and learning about this thing. So read the whole description down there and also read the disclaimer at the very end of it. And if you enjoyed this video and it helped you, hit that like button. Also, please subscribe to my channel. Have a good one, guys.